Thank you. Good afternoon. Good how are afternoon. you? Hello. How are oh, you? Great. How are you doing today? Excellent. I'm great. How are you today? Thank you so much for speaking with me. Good. How's that for now? So, Arthea? Arthea, actually. <laughs> Arthea. Arthea, like Arthur. Arthea, right. Yes. Arthea, got it. Yes, sir. Well, uh, there's so many places that I can begin. Um, we've been following you around four years. Well, my publisher, Claire McLaughlin, actually was the first black woman to own a television station back in the day Oprah was going national, and she was actually based in Texas. And, of course, I have a Caribbean connection as well, so we're definitely most obliged that you have allowed us to speak with you today. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, of course, this book that's coming out, um, I guess the first question I have for you is how does someone go from working at McDonald's to being the top sales executive worldwide for Xerox to being the music mogul that you are today? Well, you know, that's a good question, Arpia. I think it started with me as a young young child, actually, growing up in a little small town, Gaston, Alabama, uh, seeing my parents, seeing my parents, my dad, making $30 a week driving a truck, being my mom, making $3 a day being a colored maid, uh, the term for that, that time. Uh, and, and then my dad convinced his employers to allow him to keep that truck all the time, and he would use that truck uh, to generate revenue. He would tear down old houses and take the metals out and sell, um, and he had a car that needed junk, and he would bring it to our house, and he'd sell the radiator, he'd sell the engine in the cars, um, and he was an entrepreneur. My mom on the weekend would give it her best girlfriend, and they would make clothes. And then my mom would sell these quotes. So I learned entrepreneurship okay. at a, a very, very early, early age. And I watched my dad and my mom extremely passionate about what they did. Uh, and, and I was fortunate to have my parents as my mentors. Mm, wonderful. Parents as your mentors. That is truly profound. I'm the Caribbean editor of the um, Florida and the Georgia Star newspaper, which is, of course, the sister for Impact Radio. And, of course, I am going to ask, and I know you'll pick up my mother tongue if I say something like how it go and what you're saying and all the rest of that. But if you don't mind, kindly let us know about your Bahamian connection and which island you feel your navel string is buried to. You know, I, I'm told with the last name knows, and I've been to Bahamas at least, Ten times, uh, I'm told that Long Island uh, it could possibly be where my ancestry is from. Uh, I know the University of Bahamas were, was doing research on that. I haven't heard back from them yet, but I myself, I'm very curious to understand that and if that is accurate or not. So mm -hmm. if you can help in any way of that, I, uh, I'm certainly open to that. <laughs> I will certainly, because actually in my town in Eleuthera, interestingly enough, where Roxy Roker and Al Roker's family is from and Lenny and Zoe visit all the time, we have quite a lot of um, persons with the surname Knowles in that town. So mm -hmm. you have more than one island to consider when it comes to that. Well, I, I, if any way you can help, uh, please, let like, Let's find out. Let's okay. All right. Wonderful. Now, your book is being hailed as a passionately rendered blueprint for hitting the high notes of success in any industry. Do you feel you have successfully transcended beyond music, beyond management, beyond, um, you know, even your parenting and all the other things, because you've got gospel, you've got pop, you've got so many genres under your belt. Do you feel that it transcends through any industry? It does. It, it, it doesn't matter what industry. These, these traits, uh, the way that you go about being successful, uh, 